Hi class, let's discuss the runs test. When samples are selected, we always assume that they are selected at random. But how do we know if the data obtained from the sample are truly random? In order to determine if the data obtained from a sample are truly random or that it comes from a random process, we will use the RANS test. Now, the null hypothesis for the RANS test is always the sequence is random and the alternative is always the sequence is not random. What is a RAN anyway? A RAN is a succession of identical letters followed by different letter or no letter at all. For example, in this case, XXXXX would be one run and all of the Y's here would be the second run. So in this example, the number of runs is two. Let's look at this example. How many runs are there? So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So the number of runs in this case would be ten runs. What about in this example? We have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there are six runs. And what about in this situation? This would be one run, the second run, the third run, fourth run, fifth run, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth run. So in total, there are nine runs for this situation. Now, let's consider this situation where there are two runs. It doesn't look as if the letters X and Y were selected at random because five of the letters X were selected first followed by five Y's. Now, look at the first situation where there are 10 runs. In this case, it seems as if the researcher selected X and then Y and X again and then Y. So this selection is probably not random either. Now let's consider the third situation. This selection of data looks as if it may be random because there is a mix of the letters X and Y and no apparent pattern to this selection. Now, rather than trying to guess whether the data of a sample have been selected at random, statisticians have devised a non-parametric test to determine randomness. And this test is the RANS test. So now let's look at the procedure of conducting the RANS test. So first, you need to state the hypothesis and identify the claim, which are constants, and we've discussed this. And secondly, find the number of runs, which we have also discussed. Now, when the data are numerical, we will find the median and then we compare each data value with the median and classify it as above or below the median. So um, we shall try this in the next example. And then we will find the critical value using table M and we'll make a decision. I'll come back to this, um, to the procedure for the runs test once we are at each section. So let's look at this. Pass here final exam question. 
it says that the machine is adjusted to dispense acrylic paint thinner into a container. Would you say that the amount of paint thinner in liters being dispensed varies randomly if the contents of the next 15 containers are measured and found to be as follows? This question asks us to determine whether the amount of paint thinner varies randomly and this would be the clue to the test that we are going to conduct which is the runs test and our alpha is 0 0.05 now if you still remember the null and the alternative hypothesis would be that the sequence is random And the alternative would be that the sequence is not random. Next, in order to find the number of runs or the test statistic, we would need to find the median and then compare each data value with the median and classify whether it's above or below the median. So let's do this. Class, how do you find the median? Do you still remember? We've discussed this in chapter 1. You would firstly arrange the data from the smallest value to the largest value. So let's do that then. So the smallest value is 3.4. Then we have 3.6 twice. 3.7. 3.8 and then 3.9 twice then we have 4 twice 4.1 3 times And then 4.2. So now in order to find the median, we would cancel off the ends of the data until we arrive at the middle value. Cancel and cancel. Cancel. And this is our median. Okay, next, in order to find the test statistics, we need to find the number of runs. And to do that, we would compare each data value with the median and denote whether it is below the value of the median or above the value of the median. So 3.6 is below the value of the median. I would write a negative sign here. And 3.9 is equivalent to the value. I'll just leave it as it is. 4.1 is above 3.9. 3.6 is less. Then 3.9, 3.8 is also less than, less than, less than, above, less than, above. Similar, so I'm not going to write anything. 4.0 would be above. 3.8 is less than, above and above. Class, if you look at the procedure for the runs test, it says that any value that is equal to the median would be discarded. So this is what we are going to do now. Going to discard this value and this value. So imagine that both of these values are not in the data. So now, to determine the number of runs, we would look at the positive and negative values. So we have one run, two, three here, four here, five, six, seven, and eight. So the total number of runs would be eight. And we also need to determine the 
values of n1 and n2. So let's take n1 as the number of negative symbols. n1 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. n2 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Next, to find the critical value, we need to use the table M. So alpha is 0 0.05. This is table M. When alpha is 0 0.05, and we have N1 as 7 and N2 as 6. So N1 as 7, N2 as 6. We have these values. 3 and 12 and now to make the decision we need to compare the actual number of runs with the critical values our critical values are 3 and 12 so it says that if the number of runs is less than or equal to the smaller value or greater than or equal to the larger value then the null hypothesis is rejected so let's check our data so our critical value is 3 and 12. Now, for the number of runs that falls between the values of 3 and 12, we would accept the null hypothesis. So H null would be accepted. And if the value falls from 12 above, or 3 and below, then the null hypothesis would be rejected. Okay, so our number of runs is 8. So 8 falls between 3 and 12. That means our null hypothesis is accepted because the number of runs which is 8, falls between 3 and 12. So the null hypothesis is accepted. So what does this mean? It means that the sequence is random. But let's check if we need to answer any questions. Okay, so this is the question. Would you say that the amount of pain thinner being dispensed by this machine varies randomly if the contents of the next 15 containers are measured and found to be as follows. So, yes, the amount of paint thinner being dispensed by this machine varies randomly. Now let's try this question. On a commuter train, the conductor wishes to see whether the passengers enter the train at random. He observed the first 25 people with the following sequence of males and females. Test for randomness at alpha 0.05. So the first step is to state the null and alternative hypothesis. So our null hypothesis would be the sequence is random. Or the passengers enter the train at random. We could use either one. So I'm going to write down that the passengers enter the train at random. And the alternative hypothesis would be the passengers did not enter the train at random. Next, we need to find the number of runs or the test statistics. So how many runs are there? So this is the first one, second run, third run, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, 
8, 9th and 10. So our test statistic would be 10 or the number of runs would be 10 runs. And next would be our critical values. Okay, how many females are there? So N1 would be 15 and N2 would be 25 minus 15 which is 10. So let's check the critical values. N1 is 15 and N2 is 10. So our critical values would be 7 and 18. That means all values from 7 and below would be rejected and all runs from 18 and above would be rejected. So the critical values would be 7 and, and 18. And the number of runs falls between 7 and 18. So our decision would be the number of runs falls between 7 and 18. So we accept the null hypothesis. And if we accept the null hypothesis, that means that the passengers enter the train at random. Okay class, we have finished discussing the runs test. Thank you so much for your attention and I'll be seeing you in the next video.